We are now remember, live. Oh my god. This, you is, don't what, this wanna, is what happens because you reminded from Gerald. You don't want to just say <laughs> we're live right away because otherwise the beginning gets That's cut my off. Fault what does Karina do? Doing what does Karina do at this time on Sundays? Because there are lots of things. I'm just saying. You know what she doesn't do? Record a podcast. Yeah, well, you know. know. You know specifically. I'm just saying, maybe she wouldn't do. Now remember. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, you're thinking so, about substituting. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Just saying. Uh, you live with there. your own replacement, Andy. All right. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but kidding. maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm a little threat. Okay, we should start the show. Yeah, we should. Uh, yeah. We got the show. Small. You know what it is? Oh my god. This is Literary uh, Roadhouse. That's what the show is. Where we read one short story once a week and I'm Andy. I'm Anise. And I'm Gerald. I'm debating whether or not to make it do it again so that when we do the editing cuz there's a cut where we do the song. You know what? We'll figure it out. You'll make it work. I can do it again. Do I'll do it all day long. Do this is Literary worse, Roadhouse. Right? One short story once a week. I'm Andy. I'm Anise. And I'm Gerald. And this is Literary Roadhouse. Where we oh my read God. One short story once a week. And I'm Andy. All right, let's do the show. Yeah. He's... This week we read, and he says believe he it or not, like this. a short no, story. Always. <laughs> it's The Case For and Against Love Potions by Mbalo Mbue. Oh. It's a pretty good Summarize story. Summarize it for us. Yeah, I'm going to tell you guys about it. Yeah, please uh, do. Man, weird. Weird, goofy narrator who I love, right? So the narrator is this old, I think unnamed guy in the village who's telling to the second person you about love potions and why you got to get one if you're going to fall in love. And he does it by using two anecdotes. One about this poor girl, Wanja, who used a love potion and everything ended terribly for her, but is somehow still, uh, you need to do it. And then about, uh, oh, goodness, I got so excited. Uh, Mama Gita. Gita, who used the love potion, turned out great. Well, that's what everyone in the village says. But it's just fantastic. I love, like, the story's entire cadence. It's it's fabulous. And, like, I don't know what else to summarize. Wanji used the love potion, goes crazy. Mama Gita uses the love potion, gets the guy she's after. It's fabulous. Let's add a little more detail to why it fails for Wanja and why it's good for Mama Gita. So how come it fails? I mean, it, I mean, it's not like, okay, what, what happened with Wanja? So Wanja is not pretty enough to get a husband. So she's just unmarried, becoming a spinster. And finally, they set this up with this guy who's not that into her. Uh, his parents, her parents, like, all right, you guys are married now. Uh, but like, he remains not that into her after they're married. So everyone's like, oh man, what's wrong? Poor Wancha, she's finally married. And like, all right. So then, like, the narrator and all the villagers get together, and like, all right, we're going to fix this. I know. The husband used to be really into some other girl. She must have used a love potion on him. So we got to send Wanja to the fetish doctor to figure out how to undo that love potion. And the doctor's like, whoa, yeah, no, can't do that. That's, uh, you're going to have like all kinds of reactions. You better not. And she goes and gets a second opinion from a less reputable guy. And he's like, yeah, here. And then she like uses it wrong and doesn't wait till the full moon and madness ensues. But it's her madness, not his madness. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Poor Wancha. It's just a and shame. then, and then Gita uh, uses it allegedly. Allegedly, he, yeah. Right, mm -hmm. right. With this guy who is going to marry her cousin. Yeah. Right, but Gita's like, nah, I like that guy. So she goes and gets a, a love potion, hypothetically, and then he marries her instead. And the guy moves into her house, does her dishes cleans up they hang out on the porch until they're old they have like a million kids and grandkids it's great okay 
So a little bit of time, setting, place, and culture. So it's 1980s Cameroon, kind of small villages. Um, and uh, if you have daughters, your number one goal is getting them married. If you're a woman, a young woman, your number one goal is getting married. And if you're not, your parents are there wringing their hands, lowering the bride price until somebody comes and takes you off of them. So um, that's a little bit of the cultural side of it. And um, okay, Gerald, what did you think of the story? <laughs> I didn't like this story. I didn't, I, and, and uh, I mean, we, we, we had, when we, we had a little run through last weekend and, and what I didn't like about it was, was the, we're sort of verging on abuse of women on, on, on the, on the idea that women need to be married and need to be married to a certain kind of person. And if they don't, then there's something wrong with them. And this, this whole sort of, and, and the whole sort of idea that, you know, it's the woman's job to, to keep the house and raise the kids and do the cooking and do everything. And, and the, and the, and the guy just goes out and, and, works the farm or does whatever he does and comes back and, and does nothing and sits on the deck and drinks wine. And, and, and that's inherently, that's a problem for me. And I know I'm, it's a bit of a trigger for me. Um, and so after I'd read the story, I, I read about the author and, and she's a feminist and, and she, and she wrote it to, to show that, Hey, this sort of thing happens. And, and, it's not right, but but actually, I miss the it's not right bit. It's 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 almost verging on glorifying the 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 idea that, that this sort of misogynistic lifestyle is is normal, and and I didn't like that feeling. So and and one thing that we said last week was that if you're enlightened with women's rights and that sort of thing. Then you go, ha, 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 yes, very clever, very, I see what you're doing here. But if you're not, and if, you, if you're if you tending towards that way anyway and, and think, yeah, woman's place is at home and tied to the, the kitchen and that sort of thing, uh, reading the story might well help to reinforce that in maybe in a little tiny small way. But I, it just didn't work for me. Yeah, I, I get what you're saying. Like the, the the critique of the sexism, like she's highlighting the sexism well, but the critique is missing. Partially, I think, because the narrator is so like goofy and jolly about it as he tells these stories a little bit. Like he feels bad for Wanja because, again, reinforcing it, she didn't get her happy ending with her husband at the end of the day. So because the critique isn't super clear or like not really. So ba we were talking about this a little bit last week when we couldn't record, but basically you have to already know this is bad to know this is bad or else you might think like, Oh man. Yeah. Love potions. You know what I mean? Like obviously it doesn't make you believe in magical love potions, but just like it, you don't, it doesn't make you necessarily question the gender roles and the patriarchal structure in this society in any way. Yeah. 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 That's see, what that's what I really liked about it. That the critique was like implied and at the corners, right? That it was, uh, here's this goofy narrator, and he's just fundamentally wrong. But he's going to tell you this story and draw all these conclusions that are wrong and dumb because his premises are flawed, and it's fun. It is fun if you're already enlightened, though. Like, Andy, you're getting that from this because you already agree with the feminist take on this, right? So that's what yeah. it, it, we were when Gerald and I were talking about this last week. And since we were like, what happened last week? Basically, Andy had technical difficulties and Gerald and I, like the green room before we go live, did a whole show, basically. And didn't report it. <laughs> that's what happened. <laughs> but um, it, it, it reminds me a little bit of like the Colbert Report, right? Yeah. Where right, both which sides... Is excellent. It's excellent, but both sides thought it was talking to them there was a lot of conservatives and people on the right who thought it was owning the libs because the satire was so subtle and i mean you, you and i are like how is it subtle but it kind of is sometimes right and sometimes the pops he would make towards the left did land he was you know uh calling a spade a spade but also like sometimes i should share this article that i read a long time ago that was basically like when 
you commit too much to the character. And I guess here the right. Colbert the character would be the goofy narrator. The people who you want to enlighten aren't going to get enlightened. They just think you're talking to them. I think that's what what Gerald's picking up yeah, on. Yeah, I mean, and I guess that's a critique in that, I don't know, dumb people keep being dumb after reading the story. But, like, I don't know. That's on them. I don't know. That's not a critique <laughs> of the story. That's on dumb people. They sure are dumb. I, yeah. I guess, uh, if, I guess if your you know, critique I, I, of the story is it's bad in the same way the Colbert Report is bad, then, like, it's amazing. <laughs> I, I, and, and I suppose I... I I shouldn't be critiquing or criticizing the story because it makes dumb people self-justify. But but by the same token, I can't I can't like it. I, I can't you know. I thought I think there was an opportunity to to do something like and it almost went that way with with the 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 the, the guy that went mad. The um, is it Gita and TT or something? Ecola. The oh, guy went mad. Thought only Wanja goes mad. Yeah, Wanja. No, goes no. Mad. Right? Gita. Um, was it? Sorry, I just. Um, Ecola. I think it was Ecolo. Yeah, it was Ecolo who who had the potion, but clearly went mad because he was oh, right. helping clean the house. And, oh, right. And yes, he yes, was yes, yes, yes. Helping yes, to look yes, after yes. the kids and 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 yeah. and. And the point that I sort of got from that was that at first people said, "Look at this crazy man. He's he's, he's obviously suffering from from bad application of a love potion." But then it did say, "But people got to to like them, and often had people around the house, and they were they liked their company, and all this sort of stuff." So there's almost almost a sort of shat chink of of um, uh, 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 showing. Of telling the story that I wish it had told. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and also there's the, the other time where it gets really close to showing the story that you wish it had told. It was when Bulu um, is basically heartbroken. He wanted to marry this woman who he was in love with, but then her parents married her off to somebody who like can bring them bush meat three times a week. And um, basically for this reason, I mean, Wanja's physical flaws aside he's just like not interested in anyone period and nobody can understand it like what man gets this hung up over a woman like the idea that like <laughs> one man can be so hung up over a woman like everyone is like what so like there that you get close to it again right like oh man yeah. but, and, but the whole, and, and the whole idea that, yeah but that, that the whole woman idea was that, put a love potion well the, the one you was was so clearly ugly and physically unattractive that how could, how could she ever get a man and and it's just we just think oh I don't, I, yes you can sort of if if you i think if you nail the the how the, the ridiculousness of it of of that sort of um that sort of theme if if you nail that then then you can you can tell that story but i don't think she she nailed this and and it's just subtly reinforcing some misogynists points of view i think right like me. the story where um she gets naked and gets in bed to hope that this like activates what men do right when there's naked women around them and it doesn't work the misogynist takeaway from that would be man she must be real ugly right like that's the misogynist takeaway like yes. oh god we're dealing with some <laughs> she's real... that ugly yeah right right we're, we're an already like person who understand this might be like yeah, they're not in love. Like they're not, they're, yeah. they didn't choose each other. This does not surprise me. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, um, so we had that conversation last week, Gerald. But what I was thinking since then, it's what is the responsibility of the writer or the story to put that critique that we want, right? Because then it's like, well, is it on the author to necessarily draft that for us, or is the author drawing? Because like we recognize what this is um because it also exists in our own cultures and it's kind of interesting to see it painted almost the same with just slightly different nouns and places um in Cameroon in the 1980s right so like you know instead of what parents wouldn't want a son-in-law who can bring a bush meat it might be like what parents wouldn't want a son-in-law something else here it might be the equivalent but it's like the same thing right it, it, your parents aren't necessarily marrying off brides the same way but like there's still that pressure or there's still a lot of that you know especially going back a few decades even more so. 
So like, is the fact that it's just illuminating this in an accurate, truthful way for that time and place and culture, is that the responsibility or is the critique or does it depend on the author? Do That's the part I couldn't wrap my head around. So I'm like, is it really a critique of the story or is it just, do we want to read a story that has a critique in it? Yeah, I and, and I did sort of preface my original yeah. comments by by that because I recognize that I am triggered by those sort of attitudes uh, and, and probably um, unfairly triggered. So I, I recognize that. Um, mm -hmm. And it's and it's up to the author to write the story they want to write. It, it's yeah. it's they she's written this story um, and I can see what it's trying to do. But for me, it didn't work. So uh, and, and then I I reserve the right to say, no, it didn't work for me, although and Andy like it seems like Andy really enjoyed it. Um, oh, right. And, and, you know, understood it's not it's not to, to it's not a slight against Andy. It's, it's just that 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 he he wasn't triggered like I was. Because Andy enjoyed the Colbert Report aspect of it, this goofy narrator who like doesn't understand who doesn't know he's an idiot basically right right right, right. that the narrator doesn't know he's an idiot that's what's delightful mm -hmm. yeah there's yeah. my favorite i'm gonna read my favorite line from the story when uh the narrator's giving advice to wanja about what to do with bulu and she could accept him as he was but the whole idea of marriage was to alter the other person to make your spouse better for your own good uh, like oh chef kiss <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty good too i also like the part where he's like i've never used a love potion because i didn't need it right i, I don't know right. why there's just something about like just in case you're wondering like i just need to establish at all times that using a love potion is a little pathetic and i am not that pathetic even though i'm giving you this advice i would never stoop to such a pathetic uh you know what i mean like there's like yeah. a little bit of a judgment in that like i would never you know but if you are already pathetic like my friend wanja was then this could be a solution for you <laughs> also like my read was that the narrator was totally in love with wanja the whole time but like obviously couldn't marry her because she was too ugly was i don't know ugly. i don't know if but like totally right that could have just been my yeah i don't know i i see what you're saying but there's also a thing that comes up in the story that has nothing to do with romantic relationships, but more with platonic relationships, which is if you were, if you ran together as kids, right? Like if you're in the same age group and you played together as toddlers, you're like a little tribe within the tribe, right? There's like a little like nesting going on right. because everyone gets together to talk about the Wanda problem, right? right? Like they're like, we must call everyone in on how we should address this, right? So I, I don't know if it's almost like, because he also does say he's in love with his wife. He says he's in a good marriage. He likes his wife, right? He's not like yeah, but about he's it. an idiot. He is an idiot. He right. is an idiot. That's, that's kind of yeah. And that's about all he ever says about his wife. Like I don't think we learn her name. We don't learn his name either. But like yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's a good point. Is he in love with Wanja? I think he definitely admires Wanja, and it is possible to have friends of the other sex who you really admire, who you're not necessarily in love with. But I don't know, because he's an idiot. He's an right, idiot. Right, because he's an idiot. Yeah, yeah. But, um, because, yeah, because he does recognize all the things that she's good at, right? Basically, she is the perfect wife. Like, if you're if you're going by the misogyny, like, rubric of what makes a good wife, she hits all the points, except, I guess, has a nice rack. Like, really? Like, what way he describes well, her? Well, right. I guess the other is, thing like, is, like, narrow, she, she's also yeah. specifically ugly in a way that appeals uh, more to a Western ideal of beauty. Mm -hmm. in like yeah. key ways is like uh i see what you did that's funny yeah 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 exactly yeah exactly um yeah she could probably go be a model right in the west yeah <laughs> and then was it tt who had the teeth no it wasn't tt it was someone else who had the teeth like broken glass right yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> like, but she got married right because it was like it was basically like you can have one thing about you that's ugly but if you have more than one now now nobody will marry you so that's if you it. just have bad teeth but the rest of you is okay you can get married you know yes oh and, yeah, and there was another little story that hints at the critique that we that i think gerald and i to some extent were hoping for which was the woman who the girl who was um considered spoiled because she was being super choosy about who she's going to marry. She won't just marry anyone who comes calling. She's an only child, so her mother spoiled her. So, of course, right? Like, right. Uh, she wouldn't marry difficult. the fisherman because his hands smelled like fish. 
<laughs> yeah, she's like, what's wrong with this girl? She won't just marry anyone who comes calling. She should be so lucky. You know, like that that again hints at the critique, right? Because Bulu can take forever crying about the his ex-girlfriend, right? And like until his his parents try to do the, the cage thing where like they bring like women, yes. right? Like he gets some amount of choice where like I guess the only child technically does if she can reject people, but everyone's like side-eyeing her really hard. They side-eye Bulu a little bit. But yes. yeah. Yeah, and they, they said that um, I, I highlighted it. A, despite all the jokes we made about Wanja being as pretty as a sun-dried corn stalk, uh, and that it's quite quite a nice description. Western ideals of beauty again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 She yeah, had that was good. thin legs, flat belly, small buttocks, and pointy cheekbones. Wanja was not pretty enough to make any man proud. Right, she sounds like an elf. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't know. Wasn't there something? Or was somebody else? There, there was some description about someone's boobs that I thought was really funny, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I was wondering. But yeah, there's a lot of characters. But um, yeah, like the more I think about it, the more I think my need to make sure that idiots walk away from this enlightened. It's just me being like, okay, but everyone knows. Say psych right now. Like, it's like that meme. Like, okay, please tell, like, people who might read this and be like, yeah, <laughs> that's how it is. Uh, that it's not how it should be. Right. But Yeah. I, I don't know. It's still, it is still should very we, well written. Should we be writing for misogynists as our target demo? I don't know. No, that's what I'm saying. Is yeah. it on the author to do that? I mean, it's interesting because she, as an author, is critiquing it. In the interview right. with her, uh, with um, the New Yorker, right? She obviously, I guess, like, I'm wondering, like, what was her intent? Like, not that it matters too much, right? The story is still very readable, very enjoyable. I like the characters, I like the narrator. Mm -hmm. Once you're in on the joke with the author, but did she intend to write it that way? Very Colbert Report in on the joke with her, or was she trying to do a critique? Because if she's trying to do a critique, I don't think it's there enough, basically. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Yeah. I was trying to think. I was trying to put my finger on why I liked it before, and when you said Colbert Report, that really lit up everything for me. I was like, "Yeah, that's what it is." Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think it, it, it's you know, in a, in her interview, it makes it clear what she wanted to do with this and 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 the the story that she wanted to tell. So, so in a way, she wanted it to be. Uh, a feminist story but I'm just thinking that it doesn't always come across like that uh, to a, a certain section of, of society would 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 just sort of think you know even on a sort of subtle sort of subconscious level will think ah yeah of course you know ugly women shouldn't get married that's that's quite right you're, you're allowed or you're allowed to to uh, you're allowed to pity away. them for being ugly yeah, and, and turn away a woman because she's mm -hmm. not, she doesn't fit the stereotype of your own personal, visual, physical attractiveness. I like the idea if the narrator had been in love with Wanda but couldn't marry her because she's too ugly by society standards. Like, I wish more of that would have come through because now the critique's coming in a little bit better, right? Here is a man. Mm who clearly loves Wanja, but will not marry her because he doesn't want all the other men to be like, oh, he married the ugly one, right? <laughs> because now he's limiting himself. Now you see the bite to men as well. You see it a little bit with Bulu, who doesn't get to marry the woman he wants to marry, who, they're, you know, the girl who he's in love with, who seems to be in love with him as well, right? So you see it a little bit with him. Nobody understands why he would be heartbroken. All women are interchangeable if they're hot enough, right? Like it is like, like that, that, that's his society's attitude about it. And then if you yeah. have the narrator stung by it, but not even realizing it, like if he would have said something just like, you know, like when we were younger, he had thought about marrying Wanja one day, but then after puberty, she got too ugly. So there goes that. Like if, if something like that had come up, you know, like that might have been kind of funny. Um, yeah. 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 I think so, I mostly like the story, but I do also have Gerald's anxiety, like misogyny is going to keep misogyny. But I guess, yeah. I guess also those people wouldn't pick up the story and read it anyway. Like <laughs> the intended audience for this anyway, people who read the New Yorker or read like 
this kind of literature are already read in anyway. So I guess knowing yes. your audience, it's gonna land. Yeah. Oh yeah, I, I, and 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 my my own sort of negative comments towards this story are definitely my own from my own perspective, and uh, I I certainly see that 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 other people can have. You know, I'm not going to try and persuade you that that my point of view is is the right point of view. I I, I recognise that I come from it from a slightly sort of skewed perspective. That that um, um, that it's you know I don't like it for that reason. But but that's you know it's just my opinion. Yeah, my rating has gone up. Though I will say now layering on top of this if it's just this critique though of gender roles and like the patriarchy now coming back to me personally as a reader not this story then it's a little bit like oh I've, I've, okay i've read this a lot but that's just that happens too you know what we've talked about that before like when you read a lot and then you like read the same theme all over again but just in a different setting sometimes it's like okay like yeah uh, i did have a little bit of that too like even even recognizing like the narrator is a bit of a goofball who like doesn't know shit and should not be advising young people to do love potions. Um, <laughs> even within that recognition, like this apartment's like, yeah, patriarchy sucks next. A little bit, you know? There's a little bit of that feeling. Um, even though I still did enjoy the characters, just because, yeah. yeah. I, I enjoyed, I mean, I certainly enjoyed the, um, I enjoyed the writing and um, I enjoyed the, the location that, and, and I really got a really good feeling a uh, feel for for the type of location it was, and um, mm -hmm. I like yeah, I, I wrote it. I liked the African vibe, the atmosphere, and the means of storytelling. So, so telling the story through uh, a narrator like that, um, I I did enjoy that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Also, why is the Mama Gita story a case for love potions? It seems to me like still a case against. If if you believe that magic is the reason that this guy who was going to marry someone else was engaged to somebody else suddenly gets sniped. Why is this a good thing? Because it worked out for them in the end. Also, I it just it's just real funny to well, me. Well, right. Like, and like but the Wanja story also like she improperly used a love potion against priest advice. Like All right, is it don't do that, but <laughs> Right, yeah, yeah. It's not even a great case against. Like, well, right. Neither that one sounds of them like user good. error, not potion error, not magic <laughs> right. error. Maybe if you had like used it correctly, it would have worked out for you, Wanja. Yeah. 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 Also, now taking the side of magic isn't real, right? Like that—that that was the case. If magic is real, I don't understand why this is the case for and against, right? And now, if magic isn't real, why did Wanja go crazy? Because she's trapped in a horrible marriage because of society, like who pushed her into this thing and pushed Bulu into this thing too. But most of the pressure falls on her. She's the one failing, not him. Right. Yeah. Is this why she's going crazy? Uh, yeah. Be. <laughs> I feel like being crazy has liberated her a little bit. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Okay. Anything else we want to say? Just that I really liked I really liked the the tone it struck and mm -hmm. I don't know there's a particular amount of cleverness you have to be able to do to imply the opposite argument while making the stupid argument, right? Like Right. right. It's it's very craft craftiness, I think is the term. Yeah. Also, going back to the narrator, it is. It is very good. But then, you know, that's the risk in that, the difficulty in that is the Colbert Report thing, where some people are, don't catch on to the thing implied, right. the opposite argument. But going back to this narrator, I also like when he's like, ah, my dear young friend, I'm so glad you came to me for advice. A quagmire of this nature requires the wisest of minds to resolve. Clearly, you recognize who the most sagacious man in this part of the country is. Like, after you've read the story once, and you realize this man is the biggest idiot. I mean, you already get a sense he's an idiot just by the way he talks about himself. A little bit, but yes. then when you read right. it again, having that in the very first paragraph, you're like, okay, okay, <laughs> here we go. Uh, yeah, yeah. His ego's great, actually. <laughs> like that was a smart choice. Yeah, Ca like his casual narcissism, right. just like <laughs> right, casual narcissism. Very casual, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Like he's not trying to convince you of this because we all agree that the sun is in the sky, the sky is blue, and then I'm the wisest man in the village. It's just like, I don't need to right, these are in any way. Known. known casual facts. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Uh, it is clever. It's very funny. And there were some huh. chuckle moments. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay. Sounds like we're ready to rate. My rating's gone up. Andy's enthusiasm pulled me with him. Good. That's what it's for. I'm yeah. giving it a five. Oh. oh. Okay. I'm giving it a five too now, actually. Because the more oh. I keep thinking about like my critique of it as a reader, it's just my anxieties about stupid people at the end of the day. And those <laughs> stupid people aren't reading The New Yorker and aren't reading Mbolumbwe. So the people who are reading her are going to get it anyway. So for that, like my anxiety is unwarranted and it is fun. And I like the you seem disappointed. Did you think I was going to give it a six? I did. Yeah. I thought about it and I was like, well, I don't know. I felt like I've been too free with sixes. I don't know. It's great. <laughs> I love it. Okay. Okay. But I'm going to say Fair five. Enough. Yeah. Uh, and, and just, I recognize what you've said and I recognize what I am and why I'm coming to it like this, but it's my opinion and you can't tell me otherwise so yep. I, i'm gonna come with a with a three okay and we were from one to six for anyone who's <laughs> unaware yeah yes okay yeah um yeah i'm glad we had this discussion with andy now instead of just being gerald last week yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh. As always. okay yeah so next week we are reading hot ice by Stuart dybeck before you go, tell us about your experience with love potions in our Facebook discussion group, The Literary Roadhouse Readers. Don't let our podcast shrivel up like the womb of an unmarried woman. Leave a review on iTunes and support our podcast on Patreon at patreon.com slash literary roadhouse. Every bit helps. Gerald's shaking his head, but that was literally a line where yeah. Wanda's parents <laughs> I know it out is. because her womb is shriveling up in their I home. I know. I know it's a and sign. That's depressed. Why she, that's why you got to yeah, get yeah. her out. That's why you got to get around. And other people were also depressed by the fact that Wanda is still unmarried in her parents' right. house. People were shriveling. People were upset knowing she was there shriveling. Yeah. Yeah. Her womb is shriveling up, guys. Okay. And you know what? Our podcast can also shrivel up like the womb of an unmarried woman unless you leave a review on iTunes and support us on Patreon. And as always, share this podcast with the woman whose teeth are like broken rocks in your life. Until next time, read a good story. Broken rock.